This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. In this lesson, let's dig a little bit deeper into selection. Previous lesson, we looked at the basic selection tool. We do have two more arrow tools, and they're right over here. And if you click and hold on that tool, you'll see them a direct selection and a group selection. Now there's only two over there, but let's do a tear off. Click right here and you get to tear them off. That way we can work with them a lot easier. To access the direct selection tool by shortcut, press the letter A on your keyboard. All right, we've got the tools, what do they do? Well, if we go back to our selection tool for a second and we click, we select the object. I can shift click and select another object but you'll notice the objects always have a bounding box around them. Now we'll talk about that a little bit later, but it allows us to rotate or resize the images. You know, it's a, just a simple way to do it. All right, let's go back out of here again. Now let's go ahead and click on the selection tool. This one here, I guess I should do it down here since I have it there. If I click again, it really doesn't look much different, but you will notice there is something missing, the bounding box. Now the bounding box is what we use to control like rotation and resizing. So let's say accidentally you picked up this tool, but you really want to resize it quickly. So you have to go back to the other tool. Now, hold on the control key and you'll get it back again if you let go, it's like a toggle. So besides the fact that when I'm using the direct selection tool, I'm basically not getting a bounding box, what's really the difference here? Well, there are several. One of them means, like for example, if I come out of here, if I touch right here, what that means is I can select just that anchor point. Now we're getting ahead of ourselves here, but it allows me to change just that one point. You can't do that with the selection tool. The selection tool grabs the whole thing like it's one big object. So that would be another reason why you might want to use this tool. Now let's get into grouping. To group objects, and you've probably done this, I'm going to pick up my selection tool and I'm going to grab these three. Oh, incidentally, when you're working with the selection tool, all you have to do is touch an object to select it. And it will be more than glad to take all three of them into a group. Now, right now it's a temporary group. We can move it around, you know, do whatever we want. But as soon as we click out here and come back, they become individual objects again. Let's go ahead and select them. Go up to the word object on the pull down menu and go down to group. Now they become now a group. Let's do the same thing to these and to these, but this time we'll use the shortcut key, which is control G. Most people probably know that. We have now three groups. But what I want to do is I want to work on one of the pieces individually. So do I need to ungroup them? The answer to that is no. If you pick up now the direct selection tool, even though this is in a group, when you select it, you get that one piece. And again, if you hold on your control key, then you get all the controls of resizing or anything else you want to do. So if we do that, actually, again, we're getting a little bit ahead of ourselves, but that's fine. If I now let go and come out, pick up my selection tool again, the group is intact, except one of them is at a 45 degree angle. So this tool allows us to grab something out of that mix. Let me go ahead and press undo to take that back. So we know that grouping can be ungrouped in a sense with that tool, which is cool to know. But what about this one? Well, this one's kind of interesting. If I click out here anywhere, and that deselects everything, if I pick up this tool, I can come in, it's called group selection, and I click, say, here. It selects just that first one, big deal. But if you click again, not double click, just click again, it then proceeds to select everything else in the group. So you can start by working on this one, do whatever you want, and if we click again, it basically then selects all of them for you. But that's not all. Let's do this. Let's take these two groups. Actually, let me use the selection tool for this. Let's take these two groups. I'll just go ahead and shift click on these and make those a group. So we're nesting a group inside of a group. It's called nesting. Go up to the word object and select group. 
And now let's take these two, shift click here, and put another nest. So we got a nest and a nest and a nest. Object group. If I come over here with my direct selection tool, I can come in, select them, do anything I want to them individually. Now, this is the cool part. If we pick up this tool right here and I click on this one, I have that control over one. If I click again, I now can move or control those. If I click again, I now select the other group. If I click again, I select the other group. So that tool allows you to work and dig down into multiple nested grouped images. And believe me, if you do complicated Illustrator graphics, you probably do have groups within groups within groups. And that's what that tool is born and raised to do for you. Now, if we have them all selected and we want to ungroup them, we have to kind of back out again. So we go to the word object and select ungroup or shift control G. And as you can see, when we come back out, let's go back to our regular tool. We have a group of these two. These are out of the group. We do that again. And now we have our individual three. And if we want to do that again, we can ungroup these and get back to where we started. So the direct selection tool and the group selection tool take us a little bit further down the selection path. On to the next.